This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, in the last several Swan Princess movies, we've seen quite a bit of development in the blossoming romance between Lucas and Princess Elise, haven't we? They first met on a savage jungle island where they had to rely on each other for their very survival, then Elise took Lucas home to show him the life of a royal, then they fell for each other years after discovering that they both liked their respective hotnesses. What else is there? What else is there? How about a royal wedding? Indeed, the time has come to see the final culmination of their story, as these young lovers, who incidentally are not adopted siblings, despite how this scene in movie 8 made it look and sound like they might be, vow to spend the rest of their lives together- Nah, just kidding, time to go back to China! Yeah, why would we want to see the budding romance between these two characters that, in theory, we're supposed to be deeply invested in, when we can see the drama of a couple of strangers we just met? Are you really this desperate for that Chinese box office, Richard Rich? If you're lucky enough to have missed the last movie, we get a little narration briefly telling us Princess Mei Li's story. But it is also a story that is not over, as Princess Mei Li will desperately need the help of the Swan Princess once more. Once more? She hasn't helped Mei Li at all! As if we actually cared enough to ask, we get a flashback showing how Chen was turned into a dragon by the Emperor's hot librarian. I always wondered how it happened. You only met her a week ago. There is no always. Mei Li asks if she and Chen can stay there in Swan Princess's stand. Odette convinces her that she should go back to China or else she'll get homesick, ignoring how harboring refugee royalty would probably spell disaster for her own country. And she and Derek will go to China with her to make the case for why the Emperor should let her marry Chen. I always said I'd follow you to the ends of the Earth. Ends of the Earth? Here we come! <laughs> you really have nothing better to do, do you? No, I do not. But wait, you might be asking, where are Lucas and Elise? They left off camera to go to a tulip festival. No, seriously, the movie could not think of anything better for these two to do, so they just... made them disappear by shipping them away to some tulip festival? Really? Elise and Lucas are in Bromeo for the tulip festival. So, oh, Derek, drop everything that they're doing so they can help these two people that they barely know get Daddy's approval. Oh, you won the Swamp Princess Music Festival. Sorry, I'm only now noticing after we've been out at sea for who knows how long, but, you know. They thank Lee for his noble sacrifice of giving up Elise for their own happiness. Lee doesn't acknowledge, since, again, he has no idea what they're talking about. Then we cut to... Oh, Derek on the docks, who I guess are not traveling with Chen Li and are taking their own inexplicably Chinese ship to follow them? Or is the implication that they are all taking the same ship, but these shots with Lee and pals failed at showing us how they haven't left yet? Was putting some of the port behind them too much trouble? Nice work, layout artists. <laughs> I hope we're doing the right thing. 
well, since you're sailing into the sunset instead of in an easterly direction, I'm going to say that, uh, no, you're not doing the right thing. You're going to bump into the Americas first. Unless that's where they're sailing from. Which makes about as much sense as anything else. They reach China only a few hours later. I guess Swan Princess's stand is somewhere in the Philippines? For some reason, they wait until morning to make port, despite being right there, and the Emperor's Sorceress delivers the news. Because she would be looking out for them, I guess. Lee has returned. He flies the flag of victory. Just as my tea leaves predicted. Your tea leaves were right again. Good job, Fen! <laughs> Note to self! Remind the Emperor of my skills more often. Our villain, ladies and gentlemen, what the hell was that? I'm not kidding. This is the woman that the Emperor charged with cursing Chen. She's presented to us like she's the shady manipulator, underhandedly controlling the Emperor. But as soon as she opens her mouth, it's like she's channeling the goofy animal sidekick the writers forgot to give her. What are we looking at here? But yeah, Lee introduces Oderic to his father so they can talk about the future of this couple in whom they're inexplicably invested. Will you grant a private moment to the prince and princess? I would be delighted. They've requested a private moment, Fang. Her name is Fang. Bird watching again, <laughs> Fang. <laughs> It is such an honor to meet you both. Is it? They've only been in China for a few minutes, and they've already got the Imperial Palace confused for a Chinese restaurant. Where'd they get that menu? The Swan Princess. And the Prince, who could only see her beauty. Oh my god, even he knows that meme. What else is there? Odette reads a poem that she wrote on her menu, which I guess has some holographic projection technology built into it, as it details Chen Li's story of what happened in the last movie. And why couldn't Chen Li themselves be present for this little presentation? Why did Oderic feel the need to keep them below deck? Isn't this likely to make the Emperor think that they're holding his daughter captive or something? No, of course he trusts these total strangers implicitly, and he announces that Chen Li will be wed at once. Sure is nice that he regretted cursing Chen immediately after doing it, why would we want to waste time by seeing him actually observe how sad and miserable he made his own daughter, right? <laughs> but oh no, we gotta senselessly pad things out, so Chen Li run off to elope. Please, Ancient Ones. Tell me where I can find Waldo. Find Mei Li. Bring her home to me. I used to feel so close to the ancestors, but now... They feel so distant. Silly Emperor, your ancestors are completely powerless. This is a job for a dead squirrel! Actually, Lee and Derek somehow find them on their own, and they start on their way home. There, you try. <laughs> when the battle is over! Not when the battle's lost. Alright? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's nice. Laugh at Derek's first go at singing in Chinese when you never even attempted to sing in English like the other finalists. What's the Chinese word for douchebag? Mei Li runs into Feng, and it's here we learn of her dastardly plan. Chen will be mine. You love Chen? <laughs> yes. And I will be his wife. Yep. That's it. She doesn't want to increase her power, or enslave the Emperor, or rule China or anything. She just wants to... marry some guy. And they never tell us why. We know literally nothing about Chen, aside from how he's a painter. They don't establish anything about what kind of relationship he and Fang might have that would make her so gaga over him. There is no reason at all for her to want this guy, except for the movie needing some kind of conflict, and this was the best they could do! And why did she turn him into a dragon? Seems counterproductive. Maybe she doesn't have the same stigma against marrying dragons that Mei Li might have? I don't know! 
instead of Fang using her godly powers to do something simple like make Chen and Mei Li forget that they ever loved each other, she instead opts for turning Mei Li into a little old lady Mei Li. You will grow weaker each day until the moment Chen lifts the wedding veil and our eyes meet. Then you will pass from this world to live with the ancestors. <laughs> oh, perfect fit. It brings out my eyes, don't you think? This will never work. I will tell the Swan Princess. Tell the whole world! <laughs> no one will ever believe you. They met this woman because she said that a witch turned her boyfriend into a dragon. If she said that the same witch turned her into an old hag, maybe that would be worth looking into. You will never feel the love that Chen and I have. You are evil. And our love is pure. Bad is bad. Good is good. Bad, bad, good, bad. Good, good, bad, good, bad, good. Fang turns herself into Mei Li. She catches up with the guys and kisses Chen. And you'd think that this would be the point where Chen realizes that there's something terribly wrong because the kiss isn't what it should be. But no. He falls for it hook, line, and sinker because all he needs is for a woman to look like Mei Li for her to be Mei Li. What else is there? After turning herself back to normal and chewing the scenery a bit... What a bunch of chumps! Not even the Swan Princess can tell who I am! It's like taking candy from a baby! A really tiny baby who's nodding up to sleep! Thank tricks Oderic into going back to Swan Princess's stand by telling them that Uberta has suddenly fallen deathly ill, but they're stopped by the real Melee. Believe me. Believe you? My apologies, Princess. Yeah, don't say something useful like, I'm actually Melee and Fang turned me into an old woman. Please. Move along now. Please, sir. Be gentle. She's old and weak. This is none of your concern. I agree. Who the hell are you? I'm calling it now. She's his consolation prize because Lee gave up his true love, Elise. Several hours and a few hundred feet later, why don't these movies know how to traverse water? Still thinking about the old woman? No, I'm just wondering how we're running the ship with no crew. Believe me, Odette. She said it like she knew me. And what's strange is, I felt like I knew her, too. It was strange, I agree. And that Fang, she's a little spooky. Found ya! Huh. Yeah, interesting how you had to find them. It's almost like they don't want you around or something! Oh, I scared you? Well, I've been searching everywhere for you. It turns out oceans are really big. Are we too late? Is you Berta? Crazy? Yes. Wait, what? She's driving me nuts! Go find out what's happening with Derek and Odette! Too sweet! So she's not dying? Dying? Heavens no, I'm the one that's dying, she's killing me. I'm not saying something, consider I'm already dead. And yet you won't shut up! Please, just go away! Why do you haunt me, spirit? Well, Fang's tea leaves told us Uberta was dying. Go find out how she is. Now, go! I see it runs in the family. Does that mean that you're getting tired of hanging around these people? You can just disappear into the ether, you know! Also, sure is convenient that Scully just happened to show up now instead of when they'd be further out to sea, and heading back to stop Mei Li's wedding would be significantly more difficult. We jump back to you, Berta. Uh... Working out with Rogers? I've seen warm lemonade with more kick than that! Nonsense! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love it when only a handful of seconds of a movie has so much bullshit to unpack. 1. It was nighttime when Scully ran into Oderic, and it's daytime in Swan Princess's Stan. Can we please pin down once and for all where the hell these kingdoms are in relation to each other? 2. Did you need to bring back Uberta in her sports bra and yoga pants? I'm pretty sure that was at least partially to blame for Elise wanting to run away to become a pirate. 3. Rogers is a genius with a love for the latest technology, but of course he has to be trying out some pseudo-karate thing because everything's better in Chinese, I guess. 4. These two confessed their mutual love for each other a handful of movies ago. I have no idea what they're doing, 
but why is this Uberta's reaction? 5. The icing on the cake is, of course, Uberta dropping him with one punch, because women being needlessly violent to men is so funny and empowering. She's not only alive, she's dangerous. Fang lied. Or she misread the tea leaves? I see a very peculiar hand. I see a giraffe. How did she know all those details? I mean, it's like she... <gasps> she stole Uberta's book! And we have modern luggage somehow! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that before they left, Uberta made them a scrapbook about herself because she had a dream about them having a kid and never coming home or something. I don't know, it was so stupid that I thought I could just skim over it, but apparently I need to talk about every detail, especially the stupid ones, because they're the most important. Apparently, Fang stole this book from them, which is how she learned about Uberta, but why couldn't she just learn about Uberta and everyone in their lives by reading Uberta's book from a few movies ago that was apparently a bestseller? And where do these photographs come from? Oh, they aren't photographs. Uberta painted a bunch of selfies. It is amazing that you came up with that as quickly as you did. Scully, go back and tell Rogers and Mother we need help. <laughs> I've broken nails! Baby, do you want this one? Thank you. Amelie and Shen getting married? And it just goes on like this, with Scully leaping back and forth between Uberta and Oderic. Is this really necessary? I'm honestly surprised that Rogers didn't give Oderic his prototype for a smartphone. Stop! You gotta go now. Tell him we're on our way. Wait a second, one last thing. You can't go as Lord Rogers and Queen Uberta. This Fang Lady read your book. She knows all about you. So? With absolutely no explanation as to why they need to do so, Uberta and Rogers disguise themselves as... Some kind of opera singer and a steampunk Mark Twain? And I have to roll my eyes at how Uberta has to look like a clown more than the literal party clown that they threw into the second movie, and she's sharing a screen with these people who look as realistic as possible. Gotta make sure that all the dignity the movie can muster has to be given exclusively to the Chinese! I'm definitely adding this to my book of the month club! STOP CONFUSING ME, MOVIE! Oderic take a lifeboat back to China, because taking a lifeboat somehow gets them back in a few minutes. Space is warped and time is bendable. And Uberta, Rogers, and Odette's animal friends take off in a carriage with a balloon strapped to it. No chance of them flying through a lightning storm, I suppose. Wait, this balloon doesn't even have any hot air apparatus. That's because it runs on bullshit. No hot air necessary. Isn't there any in-flight entertainment? Oh, very well. I'll provide the entertainment. Is it too late for me to jump? I should have known Fang was up to something. I won't let her hurt Mei Li again. Let's go to your father and tell him what Fang has done. No, we can't. Not yet. Why not? He answers that question, which Oderic didn't ask, by showing them this magical green fire, which is the source of Fang's power, and the Emperor has the means to extinguish it if he so wanted. Surely Fang is up to something evil. It is not that simple, Princess. We need absolute proof. Father will not be the first ever to extinguish the flame just because we think Fang is up to something. Why not? He's the Emperor. What are they going to do if he makes a mistake or abuses his power? Vote him out of office? Lee comes up with a plan to do... something, which involves dressing Oderic up in their own disguises so they can... sneak into the same room they were just in. What? They infiltrate Fang's secret lair, and nobody thinks of questioning Mei Li why she would have the key. Why doesn't Fang just blow them up while no one's around? When they find this ominous warning... Come back, not have you should. Apparently, some pig Yoda is. Get away, Yoda! No! Lee! Oh no! Lee! That's your reaction? No, 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 no. I guarantee you that if a six foot spider is coming at you, your reaction is gonna be. Oh my god! 
There's your life lesson, boys and girls. If you come face to face with a giant spider, just throw a tiny rock at it. That'll stop it. She knows we're back. I told you. She knows everything. Well, there must be another way to prove she's up to something. Was her warning written in a spider web not enough for you? She tried to kill you, you dumb bimbo! These could be the marks of friendly cinnamon-scented mice. But don't worry, Uberta and pals are here to save the day. Hey, look. You can buy a statue of Bigfoot for your garden. So... Before the invention of commercial flight, before the invention of printed material, before the legend of Sasquatch was even conceived, Rogers just makes this magazine for speed to have something to read on this apparently very, very short flight? <sighs> okay. I gave myself a quick reset. Let's continue. Wait, the back cover has an ad for... The Jean Bob Show? God damn! And for the record, no, I'm never reviewing that. Never say never. Never. Hello, everyone. I have arrived. And you're turning into the lady from Go Hugo Go. They meet up with Oderic and go back up to discuss their plan. Why couldn't they do this on the ground? Okay, from the top. We use my fame as an international singing star to get us into the royal palace. Right, and then? Then I'll find Fang and keep her distracted. While? While we sneak into her lair and find the proof we're looking for. Perfect. Point of clarification. We got the queen, a genius, and two heroes, but the bird, the turtle, and the frog are doing all the dangerous stuff. And that does it. Richard Rich, hand the director credit over to Jean Bob. He needs to be in charge of this movie. <laughs> After kissing Chen again, only for him to not notice anything different about her again. Fang goes to the Emperor to say that she wants her wedding immediately. I have nightmares that... that Fang... that she'll ruin everything. Oh, is my daughter afraid that this woman is going to ruin her wedding? No matter. Since I am the Emperor, that means that I'm more or less a demigod, so I can do whatever I want. Off with Fang's head! There you go, child. Meanwhile, Oderic are looking for the old lady, despite being completely ignorant of who she is or what role she has to play in this, which means that they have absolutely no reason to look for her. While they're wasting their time here, Rogers and Uberta are trying to infiltrate the palace, which they'd be able to do much more easily without their disguises. Madame Lacroix? I can't believe I'm actually meeting you in person. You weren't there when everyone was discussing their plan. How do you know what she's doing here? The Emperor introduces Uberta and Rogers to Fang, and I gotta say, it's a weird feeling to finally agree with Fang on something. Come on, do your thing. Show me some magic, a card trick, anything. How about I make you disappear? Fang. No, no, I like it. Behind that feline beauty, she's got some real... I'm gonna make you the world's greatest magician. Send this clown away. Do you command me? No, that was a plea for mercy. Please send this clown away. And his divine emperor was pretty defensive here, wasn't he? Seems like he could command anyone to be killed and no one would dare oppose him. Is doing away with Fang really that impossible? He has Fang show Rogers the magic fire, and I have no idea why. Is this the kind of thing you want to show a complete stranger? what 
what we call a money shot. No, this is what we call a money shot. Ah! Clean up on aisle wolf. Tour's over. What? Come on, baby, you call that sorcery? No, 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 no. Put Mr. Pittypecker down. Seriously, this is awesome! And incredibly frustrating, because if Fang can do this, why doesn't she just use her powers to conquer all of China or something? The animals try to find Fang's lair to look for evidence of wrongdoing, without any idea of where her lair is or what they could possibly be looking for, and... Pretend that that didn't happen, okay? That's the Emperor! <laughs> no! You don't stop intruders by opening more doors and letting them escape! What just happened? I mean, I was looking right at it and I saw everything, but what just happened? And if this is the same spiral staircase we've seen a handful of times already, they're falling directly into the very place they've been trying to get into. How convenient. Also, why is Puffin falling? You can fly, you idiot! I never said I wasn't a drama queen. They survived their fall without even bothering to show us how they survived it. And they find... Uh, this. Hey. I cannot fathom this. Puffin steps on a panel in the floor, and it triggers some kind of concealment spell, or maybe it's magically transporting them to some other fang lair in some other dimension, I don't know. There, uh, there's, there's, there's obviously some kind of magical hoo-ha going on. Just so they can then find a piece of Star Wars technology? Richard Rich, where do you think you are? And for that matter, why are the animals so shocked by this? I'm pretty sure they don't know who Chen is. I know that they don't know who Fang is. So what's so mind-blowing about some guy kissing some girl? Or are they just amazed by the hyper-futuristic gadget that's showing it? And lest we forget, Fang apparently had this thing turned on and set on loop just in case anyone just happened to come across it. Fang, how can you be so brilliant but so stupid? Well, that completes the animation of my evil plan. I will now set it to loop in case anyone should stumble by and is curious about what this is all about. <sighs> We found it in Fang's lair. <gasps> Fang loves Chen? Well, this is our proof. If Fang loving Chen isn't proof that she's evil, I don't know what is. Really, Odette? This is the proof you've been looking for? You're not even trying to look for specific evidence to a crime that she may or may not have done. You're just looking for anything that might be incriminating, but... You find an image, which may be a forgery for all we know, 
of her kissing the man that she was paid to turn into a dragon, and this is proof that she's evil? These could be the marks of friendly cinnamon-scented mice. They run into Mei Lee again, Fang knocks her out before she can say anything more, and she has her taken to the royal cottage. Why doesn't she just make her fall over dead? I'm so glad you're both safe. That was sure strange. You're telling me. You're not telling me? You want to clue us in as to what just happened? But because Fang loves twirling her mustache, she blows her cover in the stupidest way imaginable. They have no idea who the old woman is! Zip! <sighs> the old woman is Mei Li. Come on. Oh, come on, Fang! What's the rule? Look both ways before changing! It's a simple rule! And maybe don't laugh. I'm the villain and this is my evil plan! <laughs> Back with the real Mei Li. I can't blame you for wanting to be Mei Li. She's the most wonderful person I've ever known. So, if someone tells me you're mad for believing you're Mei Li, I will tell them, no, that woman is the most sane among us. Because everyone should wish to be this is complete bullshit, of course, but man does it sound profound. The only way to make this more cliché would be to put Confucius Say in front of it. Aww, that was so touching it made her painting go into 480p. And then Little Miss Consolation Prize shows up. The woman you brought here, may I help take care of her? Please, just give me something to do so I can be in the story long enough for the prince to marry me. Fang cuts off Oderic before they can tell the emperor what they know. Then they show their hand like a couple of morons. Chen belongs to Mei Li. Chen belongs to Mei Li? What's wrong with that? I say that I belong to you, and you say that you belong to me. Well, sure, but that's us saying that about ourselves. She could have said... Chen's in love with Mei Li. She could have said, Chen's destined to be with Mei Li. Nobody owns him any more than they own her. Chen belongs to Mei Li. I am... Sweet, innocent Mei Li. Oh my god, Mei Li was the sorceress this whole time! But why is she trying to steal her own boyfriend? <sighs> <laughs> you will not get Chen. Too late. Oh no, they got sucked into the Emoji Movie's Instagram! We'll always have Paris, Mary. Actually, if they were in this painted environment, interacting with the Emperor's ancestors, that might be kind of cool. But no, they're just stuck with a bunch of static images floating in space. Well done, Spawn Princess 10. You've succeeded in making me say, The Emoji Movie did it better. And nice going, Fang. Not only did you fail to kill your enemies again and grant them the chance to escape and foil your plans, however slim those chances may be, but by poofing Oderic into Chen's mural, you've basically removed even more of your motivation for chasing after Chen. What do we know about him? He's an artist, and nothing else. What else is there? It's entirely possible that Chen's art is just so beautiful that it speaks to the human soul like nothing else, but... All that we've seen him do is this mural, and it looks kind of standard to me. But if Feng has the power to poof people into murals like this, Chen's artwork becomes meaningless. Is Chen just the hottest piece of ass in China? Why are you doing any of this? Poor daring heroes. So used to coming to the rescue. Oh, no. There's no one left. Who can save the day? Except for fucking Scully! Now that's a ten, Fang! A ten all the way! Chica chica fang fang! For the love of God, please stop! She's supposed to be Maleficent, not Luann Platter! <laughs> I'm a virgin! <laughs> oh. Lee shows his father the hologram projector. And then the Emperor just walks away. Wait, 
that's it? Not, oh my God, what's that amazing device you're holding? Or, oh no, Fang is in love with Chin. Just facepalm by now? What else is there? He goes down to extinguish the flame, but Fang tries to talk him out of it when, again, she could just, you know, use her magic to stop him. You lied to me. To think how you made my daughter suffer for your own selfish desires. How you made this whole kingdom suffer. Wait, what did she do to hurt the entire kingdom? I think the implication is that if Meili is in pain, the entire kingdom is in pain. Bit of a stretch, maybe, but if that is indeed what you're implying, your divine emperor, you told her to do it, you flaming hypocrite! I have done wrong, divine emperor. But for the sake of the ancestors, for all the ancestors who have passed, and all who will come... Ancestors who will come? Those aren't ancestors, they're descendants. I'm rotten to the core, core, rotten to the core. Walked right into that one, didn't I? She says that she'll leave the kingdom forever, and because the all-powerful emperor is a giant pushover, he lets her go. <laughs> I never could have planned this better myself. Fang is no more, never to be seen again. I will now and forever be. Lee. And why didn't she just do that as soon as her cover was blown? Lee and Future Princess Constellation Prize finally meet with all of 18 minutes left in the movie. The first movie wanted to take a jab at Disney's princessy love at first sight trope by having Derek want Odette just for her hotness and nothing else, and then kinda sorta appreciate her other attributes at the end, regardless of never learning anything more about her. And what do we get in this movie? Wow, you're hot! You're hot, too! Wanna get married? Sure! Speaking of weddings, Chen and Feng Li are finally tying the knot. Oh, sure. Have the bride being walked down the aisle by her father who's giving her away. Have the ceremony held not in a temple. Have everyone standing. Just take a regular western wedding and toss the bride in red. That works. If not Magandhi there says, Dearly beloved, I quit. Malage. Marriage is what brings us together today. I am so sorry. I tried so hard to tell him not to do that joke. But I couldn't. And since the movie's been building up to you, Britta singing in all of her horrific glory, here we go. Your love comes to rescue me just in time. me just in time everything all i could do our love or sing now makes a new forever dream for us my heart will always beat the sun will always shine it's amazing for all of the confusing shit that's been going on in this movie, I'm genuinely more confused by how good this is. No, I'm serious. The movie pulls a 180 and doesn't deliver on the ear-splitting punchline that Uberta's singing is built up to be. She sounds... good. She and Rogers have a little moment as it looks like they're remembering their feelings for each other that they seem to forget by the end of every movie. And then we cut over to Mei Li, who looks like she dies, and her paradise is that she's young and beautiful again and gets to spend eternity with her true love. This is... legitimately touching. Except that I see that we have 15 minutes of movie left to go, and it's just gonna fall to shit all over again. I am... Oh, 
Oh, no. Are you serious? The tear is going to free Oderic? It's a dolphin tear caught in a net of magical moonbeams! Yes, somehow Maylee cries through the mural, and somehow the tear sets Oderic free, and they're not even the slightest bit confused by what just happened. Always here just Mother? Your eyes will see one last beautiful thing. Because I know that you're Meili and that you're dying little by little. Not that I'm actually doing anything about it, because... Um... Profound and mystical and... stuff. He arranged for Meili to stow away on Lee's boat. He knew that Lee was going to fall in love with Elise and then give her up for reasons beyond his understanding and that somehow that would break Chen's curse. He's playing matchmaker to Lee and Princess Consolation Prize and now he knows who this little old lady is and he's just gonna let her die while watching something beautiful because, as you said, profound and mystical and stuff? Who is this guy, Chinese Jesus? Each and every moment brings new love Forever and always you save me I'm doing the lip thing. And there it is. Back to shit. Oderic stopped the wedding and they somehow blow things covered before she can do it herself. Wait a second! Are you telling me I sang for an imposter? Are you telling me that you borrowed Rogers' Uberta face when all you needed to do was change your hairstyle? Wait a minute, hang on. Did her nose actually get bigger when she tore that mask off? It did! Somehow that mask is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside! Space is warped and time is bendable. This is Mei Li. Oh crap, look surprised. Uh, oh my goodness, it's uh, Mei Li! Wow, I am so surprised! I... believe you. <gasps> She goes back to normal because Odette believed her? Did she give her true love shoulder squeeze? You? Yes, I did it for us, Chen. Surely you understand? I don't even know who you are! Fang uses her magic to desaturate the movie and kick off the climax as she poofs everyone away into the mural. Quick, somebody punch Melee in the gut so she can cry him out! Hello? Chen? Are you there? Is she having a Zoom call with the mural? Lee somehow gets away and tries to undo this lock thing that'll put out the flame. In the true Jim West style, I'll just bash it with a rock! Watch this. Ugh, I want to dock this woman points for doing this instead of just killing Mei Lee quickly. But then again, as hammy a villain as she is, I guess this is exactly the way one deals with the last person who's a threat to you. Suddenly, I can't help but wonder why she didn't bother busting out the snake sooner. What else can I do? Where there are pure hearts and good works, there is always hope. Oh, thank you. Okay. It's not Scully who saved the day. Even if it is technically the same thing. But he said something profound as he did it. <laughs> Whoops! Rolled a one on his ability check. Wow, that was pointless. Speaking of pointless, 
Fang is chasing Mei Li around for a bit instead of using her fire breath that I guess she always had. I had fire? Seriously? Do you have to keep talking? Of course! He is the comic relief, yeah? I mean, we? Psst. I'll distract her. Wait, Odette's here? I thought she got poofed away into the mural. Nope. The guards get poofed, the Emperor gets poofed, Chen gets poofed, Derek gets poofed, but Odette, she bailed at the first sign of trouble. What was it that Derek said he appreciated about her at the end of the first movie? I love you. Your kindness and courage. I always have. I joked about how Derek pulled that completely out of his ass since he never had the chance to see any of that in her, but the courage? It was never there to be seen at all! Get ready to run! Like I did earlier. Princess Consolation Prize just happens to show up in the cave with Lee, and she helps him put out the flame. Well, crap, that didn't work. No, actually, it did work. Except... Oh, oh, dead. oh, now she's the Peking princess. If she turns into a swan again... Actually, if that happened, that might make a bit of sense. Remember, she's a demon. I know that she's not really going to die because these movies will never have the balls to kill off an important character like Odette. He doesn't count. But at least they try to pretend that she actually might be dead, and then someone says, I love you, or they sing a little song or something, and then she's fine. But... really? You're not even going through the motions anymore? I thought you were dead. Nope. It takes moors and fangs and fire to defeat... True love. <gasps> Sounds like a line someone else would say. Yeah, it's almost like you should stop talking. So now that Odette got better... from dying, it's time to go home. We will never forget what you have done for this kingdom. As my father has spoken. A.K.A. what he said. But much more profound. As my father. <laughs> no being profound for her, all those vagina emotions. So they fly off, and I have no idea why this is supposed to be as big of a tearjerker as it is. They only live a couple of hours away. What's stopping them from seeing each other again if they so wished? Ah, uh, times have certainly changed, Drew. My daughter has married a common artist, and here I am. Eating in the kitchen. <laughs> Indeed they have, Divine Emperor. Go ahead and take note of your daughter's wedding. That's kind of out there. But why are you here in the kitchen exactly? But I think I've taken all the change I can. From now on, Rue, we go back to the old ways. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. You falling in love with me completely off screen in a matter of seconds? It's ridiculous. <laughs> hmm. Did you know about this, Rue? The times are certainly changing, Divine Emperor. Mostly because I arranged the whole thing. And of course, Princess Consolation Prize is on the mural after Lee only just met her, because true love, or something. I guess since Chen is the royal son-in-law, that gives him the freedom to just paint whatever he wants without getting the okay from the Emperor first. And how many times is this movie going to end? It ended with Mei Li dying, it ended with Odette dying, it ended with Oderic and her friends going home, it ended with the times a-changing, it ended with the mural, it really could have ended with the last movie instead of leaving it on to be continued. How many endings does a movie need? The last 15 minutes of this movie lasted a week! Lord of the Rings didn't have this many endings! So that was The Swan Princess, or Royal Wedding, and it's the perfect marriage of What the Hell and... No, seriously, what the hell? Just... 
What was even the point of this? Okay, fine, to make money, but is it really worth alienating your audience this badly? The animation is uncomfortably inconsistent. The characters we're supposed to want to follow have been reassigned into background elements. The new characters are bigger attention hogs than Elise and Lucas ever were. Their comparatively more compelling story was completely swept under the rug. Scully is still just... infuriating. Fang is... what? And the story itself was just a complete waste of time. Here's all that needed to happen. You can't marry Chen. I implore you to reconsider. Hmm, okay. Not to mention, the fact that the last movie made a handful of references to the other movies, implying some desire to maintain their continuity instead of just making each sequel a soft reboot, and all of the focus on these characters in this movie is giving me a horrible feeling that this is where the rest of the franchise is going. Sorry, Swan Princess fans. Every sequel after this one is going to be about these idiots. I must repeat that Uberta's wedding song was excellent, but it's far from enough to save this garbage. And what the f*** was up with that pinball sequence?! I never thought that I would say this about a Richard Rich movie, but when the next sequel comes along, I just hope and pray that it'll be a return to form. See you later. Your love comes to rescue me just in time. Giving all you reach me just in time. Shine. You'll always save me just in Okay, okay. Hey guys. Try as we might, it is simply impossible to forget the pinball sequence from the movie that I just finished reviewing. And it all us. and all I can ask is why? It kind of looks like the movie wants to go in a slightly more serious tone. Especially with that whole Uberta thing. Oh my god. <laughs> but then it just goes straight into left field with that. But we're not here to talk about that. Let's just continue to try to forget it. But it's very hard to when there is a very similar game out there available on mobile phones. Simply called Jean-Bob something or other. Let me look at this. What is it? <laughs> the Swan Princess Gator Escape. <laughs> and I'm going to play a little bit for you to show you what it looks like. Show you why you need to avoid it. But first, I need to show you what... What it wanted to be. <laughs> what it wanted to be, yes. Very, very good way of putting it. Um, it is very... It is very easily a clone of Frogger, 
And for those of you in my audience who are too young to know what Frogger is, because God knows I'm just that old, here is what Frogger looks like. You're not like. old, you're retro. I'm retro. Good, that's a good way of putting it. Pardon me. <laughs> All right, so we've got this cute little frog who is trying to jump across the road here, and I almost got hit by a car there. Oh, speaking of cars, there's a Optimus Prime down there. Hello. And we want to pass up Ratchet here. Uh, oh, look, there's a little coin floating around. Can I get it? I got it! Hooray! But anyway, the point of this game is to leap across this road here, and then we jump on these various other things to cross the pond. I don't know why I can't just swim across because I'm a frog, but whatever. And I want to get to the other side of the pond here, and I got a little fly. Getting the fly is just a little bonus. It's not the object of the game here, but um, it's there. A couple extra little points there. And got another coin. Hooray. Uh-oh. You see, one of those turtles are dipping down. We don't want to jump on them. We want to jump on the stable. Ah! Missed one of the logs, and I just sunk. So, whoops. But, all right, got about a minute left to go here before time runs out. I must cross, 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 and... Ah, there's one more little guy. Gotta hurry. Time's a ticking. Ah, 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 ah. Come on. Mm. Two more little holes to fill. Let's go, and... Ah, I missed the fly, but I got to my safe spot. So that's what matters. Eh. Last one. Last one. Come on. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It's tricky. Eh. And I did it. Woohoo! Stage go, clear. Go. And with only 26 <laughs> seconds left to spare out of two minutes to, to, to play this game. So, a uh, fun little retro game. If you want to try something like this, check this one out. And let's go ahead and pause here and switch over to the main event, Gator Escape, starring Jean Bob. I just want to point out before you start that, that your green screen effect, it looks like you're flying backwards into Tron space. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish it was Doctor Who. <laughs> that would be infinitely more interesting than... than uh, the Gator Escape game. Oh, totally. But as it is, you'll just have to be entertained with my being master of electronic time and space here. <laughs> Pardon my pouring. Of course, of course. Oh, and for the record, there are two other Swan Princess games available in the Google Play Store. One is a hidden object game, and one is a memory game, like you flip over cards and try to match them. But because we're here to enjoy uh, my pain... Let's look at this, and wow, what a <laughs> quite a, de a departure from the original Frogger, right? As opposed to seeing everything just from an overhead angle, we got this weird isometric angle, and there are no buttons. There aren't. There is a little D-pad in the corner there. It's up to me to to swipe where I want to go, and <laughs> as you can see, that's kind of hard to figure out where to go. Uh, let's see. Do I swipe that way? Uh, okay, so swiping up goes forward or forward that way or whatever. And, ugh, and these controls are so delayed. Swipe, boing, swipe, boing. It's supposed to be swipe, 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 and, ah! Oh, okay, I almost got hit by that guy. Uh, I, I have no idea what's going on with these people. They just want me dead, and I have no idea why. Hey, I'm Jean Bob! Have you met Jean Bob? Uh, well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think they've met me. I don't think I know any of these. Ow! And I just got ran over by a horse and carriage. Damn it. And... And as you can see, I got no, I got I no way to Scully tell what's driving. coming here. What? I bet Scully was driving. Yeah. Psh. Yeah, if Scully was here. Ugh, okay. Ah. And um, you mean uh, I can't hop over a bush? Really? Okay. <laughs> so the objective of this game is not to get across the the pond to my little froggy hole or whatever, but instead <laughs> I'm here to collect coins. Now, in Frogger, the coins were kind of a bonus, neat little uh, uh, point uh, thing there, but no, this is the entire point of the game, is to collect these stupid coins, and I have no idea why. Am I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, am I not a prince? Am I not already rich, I think? And I'm sorry, the whole point of my character is that I'm trying to kiss fair maidens. I don't need to get rich, I just gotta become a freaking prince again. What are coins to me? But, yeah, I just gotta... Hop around, and, and it looks like I'm... I'm t ah! What the... Time? There's a time limit here? I, I totally 
didn't see that there was a time limit. I, I, I'm too busy trying to avoid things and not getting killed, but all right, next stage. I The time's up and I get to go to the next stage. Okay, not sure how that works. I thought that would give me a game over. I gotta restart here, but eh, and, and I drowned. How does a frog drown in water? Well, I suppose I was drowning in the last game, so I guess that's fair, I suppose. But, eh, it, no. Too many people on these on these boats that can't go in. Ah, damn it. Died again. But, okay. You're okay. not very good at this. I am not very good at this, no. <laughs> and and you saw how I was doing on Frogger. It's it's not that I... Uh, damn it! I just got bear-hugged by mustachioed Lucas. Who are you, Freddie Mercury? But, uh... Yeah, it's it's not me, it's this game. Swipe, jump. It's supposed to be simultaneous. Sure, it's the game. Yeah, you saw how I was doing on Frogger. That was working. Why can't I do this? And let's see. Uh, show me a boat. Show me a boat. Gotta cross this stupid little thing. No, can't cross there. Okay, there's a boat. And there's a boat. And uh, I crossed it. Ha <laughs> ha! I crossed the stream. Thank God. Now to collect more coins, because that's what I gotta do. I guess I can... Maybe I'm figuring I can buy my way back into nobility. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, and, it's, uh, okay. Cross that one too. Almost there. Must find, uh, and I freaking died. <laughs> come on, come on. Ah, ah. All right, more coins. Here we go. Uh, uh, You're not getting rich no. anytime soon. I am not. I've only got, uh, 65% of the available coins on this. Oh! Damn it! Okay. Okay. Avoiding that guy. Trying to avoid these characters that just come the hell out of nowhere. Hello. Nice to you see you. you your childhood nostalgia being uh, inspired by this? Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> I can... I can... I can go back to the time when I was such a fan of... Uh, okay, time's up here, too. Yes, it takes me back to, to the time when I was such a fan of this one princess, and I just sat on on the edge of my seat all day thinking, man, when am I going to get to play a video game where I'm Jean Bob collecting coins in a Frogger ripoff? <laughs> Someday that game will come! <laughs> okay, uh, I, I got 90% of the coins here. So, Ooh. okay. I, I, I believe this is possible. I, I should be able to get... 100% of the coins here. Oh, holy crap, that one was fast. So long as I can Ah! No! Jump faster. Okay, what is the point of putting a coin there if I can't physically go there? Come on! It's, it's, it's a tease. Yes, it's a tease. <laughs> it's just like my whole role in this franchise. Oh, I am, actu <laughs> I am actually a prince! All I have to do is kiss a fair maiden and then I will be a prince again! Oh no, I can't kiss any maidens because I don't know why. Odette, why won't you kiss me, you hussy? <laughs> See, uh, damn it! <sighs> Died again, those stupid horses. But seriously, Odette, just kiss the damn frog. Do him a favor, okay? He doesn't want you to marry him. He doesn't want you to... Ah! doesn't want you to do anything but give him a kiss. Just kiss him, turn him back into a prince, and let him go on his froggy way, okay? And then maybe we can get some decent uh, side characters in this. But, uh, all right. All right so yes, we... because once Jean Bob becomes a prince, he's going to become a decent side character. And no, no, no. That just means that he can leave, and we have room for someone else to come in. <laughs> you, you know, like Lucas, how he was supposed to be just a side character. Who? <laughs> <laughs> okay, eighty-five percent of the coins. All right, let's go. Come New on. movie. Who this? <laughs> what? Uh, one more. Just need one more coin. Oh. Almost missed you, and hooray! I got 100% of the coins, even though there were obviously a lot more coins left on the board. How does this work? Uh, wheel action! Win three games in a week! One princess <laughs> I, I, I guess. <laughs> 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 uh, better than Alpha and Omega, uh, math, I suppose. You four, play there! There's five of them! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's... <laughs> there we have... The Swan Princess Gator Escape Game, and it is hell. <laughs> or so much fun. Or, or or maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just in the wrong frame of mind to, to play this game. I don't know. <laughs> but if you, <laughs> well, at least we can agree on one thing. It's still somewhat more comprehensible than that pinball sequence. What the hell was that? <laughs>
Thank you all for joining me for this. Um, if we run into any other movies that happen to have uh, cell game tie-ins, maybe we'll check those out too in the future. I don't know. Did you enjoy seeing this? But let us know in the comments below, and we will see you later. Bye! Hello, and welcome once again to the question of the review, where we talk about a, a particular element from the, the last review and say, hey, what do you think about this? <laughs> And what was the question from last week's review, baby? The question from last week's review was... Duh, 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 recreate the character of Prince Lee to make him the kind of guy that would really be worthy of Elise's fascination. Focus on his personality and skills rather than his looks, because let's face it, this is a Richard Rich movie. You get what you get as far as design goes. <laughs> and we were trying to avoid people saying... Make him a different ethnicity. That'll make her like him better. <laughs> yes. You know. for, for, all, for all of my bitching about the pandering to the Chinese market thing, okay, this is the movie. This is what it's trying to do. So this is what we're stuck with. He's Chinese. Deal with it. <laughs> um, but on the topic of design, I had to respond to your uh, Richard Rich comment. Uh, well, we do know we, we do know that it can always be worse. I'm going to make a puppy's <laughs> <laughs> Not Canadian wolf puppy syndrome. No! <laughs> Where, oh dear god, is Leah a five-year-old despite being born like 18 years ago? <laughs> no, Elise is. Oh yes, that's right. <laughs> She's perpetually stuck at 14. She is legal, right? <laughs> Depends on your definition. <laughs> um, the uh, rest of my answer here is kind of a conglomeration of what uh, Raven and I were talking about when, when we were thinking about the uh, question of the review here. I think I have a simple yet effective way of making Lee worthy of Elise's attention. Make him Jackie Chan. Seriously, is there anyone who doesn't love him? He's funny, he's charming, he's ridiculously talented, he's a better singer than most people probably know. We have all these other uh, music festival finalists doing these elaborate dance routines with their songs, right? How awesome would it be to see him doing some kind of martial arts demonstration while he's singing, uh, like in uh, Jackie's cover of I'll Make a Man Out of You? Uh, if you have not seen Jackie Chan cover I'll Make a Man Out of You and watch the original video, it's really good. Mm -hmm. And again, surprising. Because, <laughs> uh, yes, we all know him for his martial arts, but, but how many of us know him for his singing? He's actually a classically trained uh, singer. And, yes, and, and how many people know that? <laughs> uh, let's see what was it? Ah, yes. Uh, maybe Elise can be attacked by some thugs while they're making a routine tip, a routine, a routine trip through town, and Lee, martial arts guru that he is, kicks their asses, making Elise even more gaga for him. And on the other side of this is Lucas, who's green with envy as Lee is moving in on his girl. But damn it, Lee is such a good guy that he feels terrible for hating him. <laughs> Because who doesn't love Jackie Chan? I know, right? Ah, I hate you for moving in on my girl. But, but you're, you're so awesome. <laughs> I can't say that I blame her. Damn it! <laughs> I can see the appeal. I'd have him. <laughs> um, it's uh, funny. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, really good uh, answers for these uh, questions, but some of them we kind of skip because they're uh, we come across some <laughs> answers that don't really answer the question as well as some others do. But um, I had to include uh, Turkish Van 2's answer. You're telling me to look at something other than his looks, but what else is there? <laughs> it is a Swan Princess movie, after all. It is indeed. You get points for being a smartass. <laughs> Maginism, I think I might be butchering that. If I am, I apologize. Please forgive says, us. Says, make him smart, adventurous, kind, a good ruler. You know, everything everyone else in the past seven movies isn't. Suggestive and a burn. <laughs> Sage Man says, well, I say change up his musical style and his appearance to match. Uh, blue hair and a ton of makeup. Pure K-pop. Yes, I know he's Chinese, not Korean, but like some cheap Richard Rich movie is going to care about which East Asian country the individual culture components come from. Because Very of China! China. <laughs> Definitely. I'm, 
I'm sure that in my ripping on this movie, my stereotypical that Chinese accent is bleeding over into stereotypical Japanese at some point. I don't know. <laughs> but keep in mind, there is a difference. He's not <laughs> ripping on China because China. No. He's ripping on it being I am the ripping, land of mystic and magic and... I am ripping on Hollywood's China. There's a yeah. difference. <laughs> <laughs> Need something Whereas mysterious? To Go China. To China. <laughs> There's a different difference between a China and China. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> Brian Humerez says maybe Lee could be a stone-faced prince that has incredibly high standards and doesn't tolerate nonsense. Later on, the main characters discover that he is this way because his father instilled many values in him so that he could be a great emperor when the time comes, and that they were very close. When he passed away, Prince Lee was devastated that he decided was so devastated that he decided to harden his heart because he felt that it show, if he showed any perceived weakness, then he'd be letting his father down. The movie would go on, and he would come to terms with his father's death, and he'd become who he used to be for the better. Become who used, his father used to be for the better, I think is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And on that note, maybe it could give him a parallel with Odette, who also lost her father. This would give her some importance to the story. Once again, you know, her being the eponymous character. <laughs> yes, she who apparently has no responsibilities as a leader, who I guess had no rearing as a princess and or queen. She just kind of is. <laughs> Is she just a figurehead while Who Lord Rogers is ruling kingdom? everything? What? Who runs the kingdom? It's not Oderic. It's not Uberta. She went off on a book tour. I, I I think it has to be Rogers. Him being a lord and all. <laughs> but that doesn't qualify him to be the monarch. Uh, well, what does in this kingdom? Apparently they... <laughs> Just like an Alpha and Omega, they can hand out titles like Valentine Candy. Hey, Lucas, you're a prince now. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go hide in the tree. <laughs> uh, Teague Brahman says, I make him look more accurate to where he is from. You know, uh, given the top knot, ornate robes, servants uh, waiting on him hand and foot, expensive stuff up the wazoo, a palanquin, everything you'd expect uh, someone of these says to have. Uh, by that I mean someone whom, in this homeland, is lucky enough to be descended from uh, the most divine man on earth. But over time, uh, make him less vain and more sympathetic as time passes, kind of like the Beast. Um, I like this answer because we wanted to, to veer away from appearances of this character. What would you change about his personality? But at the same time, this answer is describing someone who is very, very traditionally Chinese, and someone who is very upper crust traditionally Chinese. He's going to be stuffy and set in his ways, and all of a sudden here comes this very strong-willed Elise, like, who are you, woman? Kneel before the emperor. <laughs> it's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and heads are going to butt, lessons are going to be learned. <laughs> That could have been interesting, and it you, might have it might have drawn her to him more because she would have been interested in seeing if she could loosen him up. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, yes, it's it's one of those things where you can see the entire character just in how he looks. Um, yeah. You, of course, you don't want to judge a book by its cover, but some covers are very, very descriptive. <laughs> KP says, I have an idea that I think also ties the two plot lines in the movies together. What if Prince Lee was also trying to help Chen's curse and help smuggle Mei Li to the kingdom? Perhaps he accidentally let it slip that their fa to their father that Mei Li and Chen were in love, thus making himself to blame for what happened. Uh -oh. He is a rather aloof and he's a rather he's rather aloof and distant at first, because he's still upset with himself and afraid of messing up again, but when forced to spend time with Elise, he eventually reveals himself to be a sweet and charming young man. When he learns about how the curse can be broken, though, he is sacrificed 
through I'm sorry how his curse could be broken through sacrifice he's reluctant at first due to him not wanting to break her heart but when he learns that Lucas and Elise have feelings for each other and that he's been getting in the way of their blossoming romance he sacrifices his love to save the relationship between both Maylee and Jen and Lucas and Elise I love it mm-hmm. I I think that was my favorite favorite answer the whole of, of all of them yeah. Uh, again, we're trying to to, to to focus on how would you change this particular character as opposed to what would you do differently with the plot. But those few plot details really say so much about who Lee might have been as a character. Uh, holy crap. Not only is my sister and her uh, lover cursed, but it's my fault. Uh-oh, right. burden! <laughs> and he's got to deal with that and he and it's up to him to set it right and and then it, it and then it makes his sacrifice of elise actually a lot more palpable <laughs> yeah not only does he sacrifice himself his own heart because elise is his true love mm-hmm. um and, and there's another there was another answer i don't know if we included it i don't think we did that asked the question um since elise wasn't Obviously, does that or does that mean when when Lee sacrificed his love, does that mean that Elise lost her true love? No, the 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 breaking the spell thing happened because one person sacrificed their true love. I honestly think, for better or for worse, Tulip Dude is Elise's true love, <laughs> and I don't. There was really no reason for her to have tossed him aside for a minute, you know, other than to say, okay, Lee's. Uh, Lee and Elite Lease. Yep, that's their couple <laughs> name. Elise, yes. <laughs> Lee and Elise uh, are in love. Or and Elikis. Out, and that's the sacrifice. <laughs> that's the only reason that Elise was ever written into it, just to show that, you know, because she she, she moved from Lee to, a, to Lucas like that. There was no... No transition. There was no mourning period. There was. She really didn't have a choice. She was told what to do. I, I was going to say, but you're, you're you're ignoring a very important fact that as a young woman, she has no opinion. Right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Elise and Luke is okay. Elite Lee. If you want to call him Elite. Lee made the sacrifice. But he didn't know he was making the sacrifice. That was the point that we made in the review. And that's a big so deal. So if he knew that it was his fault that Chin got cursed in the first place, it was his fault that his sister was unhappy, and it was becoming his fault that he was putting a wedge in between these these star-crossed lovers, Lucas and Elise. No, this must happen, And that could please. have been a major redemption arc for him. Is like, okay, I'm going to set my happiness aside. I'm no longer going to be a factor in their relationship. I'm going to redeem myself for the mistake that I made. And, you know, I'm a good guy. Absolutely. So, yeah, that was definitely my favorite question, my favorite reply to this question of the review. Good job, KP. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, the Subware Man, says, if he wasn't such a pretentious stick in the mud, maybe he'd be tolerable. Maybe the personality we see in this movie could be a facade he puts on to maintain an air of royal dignity. His upbringing could have been extremely strict, so he's had to repress his true emotions. But inside, he's actually sort of a goofball with a creative and sensitive side. Uh, music might be the only way he can truly express himself, and throughout the course of the movie, Elise could actually have a brain and notice uh, some little hints of Lee's personality shining through when he's practicing. Uh, then she'd help him break out of his shell, and they'd grow closer that way. Or something like that. If they played that up a little, he might be a decently interesting character. Either way, he's still more impressive than that wiener boy, Lucas. <laughs> Sorry, baby, I, I, I think you might be alone here in your uh, Lucas Elise shipping. <laughs> <laughs> Shy Cartoon Girl says, I'm going against the grain here. Let's make Prince Lee the main villain of the movie. That in <laughs> itself, yes, that would definitely make him more appealing to Elise. Because <laughs> they love the bad boys. <laughs> they love the bad boys. <laughs> Lee's personality is that he's charming, charismatic, funny, but selfish, sly, cunning, ambitious, and entitled underneath. Making him the perfect foil for Elise and Lucas's romance conflict, and to help tie in with Mei Li and Chen's subplot. That's just what I think would work for the movie, or you know, possibly make it better than what we got. There, it doesn't take much to make it better than what we got. It does not. Um, but that's another really, really good idea. 
is that, but see, then that wouldn't have broken Chen and Mei Li's curse because if he was all, you know, he would have had to legitimately fall in love in spite of the fact that he was just being ambitious and trying to climb the Dang. royal food chain, gain power for his per- his kingdom. And- the social ladder. <laughs> yeah, he, but- he, he had to have accidentally fallen, truly fallen in love and then made the decision to sacrifice himself. So while it's a good idea... I think it would have been kind of sticky to actually break the curse that way. Or, you know, we ignore the whole self-sacrifice thing anyway. And again, we got all these other uh, 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 finalists, one of whom we know for sure can turn into an animal. Maybe you want to talk to Humbalani there? (laughs) I'm sorry. True, they could have found a different way to break the curse. He turned into a panther! Anyone? (laughs) Hello? (laughs) Hello? But while I don't think that Shy Cartoon Girl's uh, answer fit in with making, I mean, with uh, fixing the problem with being a better, a work, a workable plot, it definitely would have made Elise more fascinated with him because it would have been a bad guy and she just would have fixed him. I can fix him. I can make it better. <laughs> he just needs the love of the right woman. Sorry, Elise. There is no the one. I gotta be free. Uh, Max's channel says He saw the entire world and went on many adventures He is fearless and well studied in the ways of many cultures of the world He is also open-minded to other people's cultures and ideals But still has his own strong moral compass And just like what we were talking about earlier with the ladies loving the bad boys They also love a man who's worldly (laughs) True, true Oh, please teach me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he, I think he was meant to be shown as a good future leader, someone with a strong moral compass and all that, but it was just so b- poorly done. <laughs> um, and while that's a good answer, I don't think that that would have attracted Elise to him. Don't think so? No. Why not? Because when did she when did she fall for him? Um, when the script demanded it. But what specific scene showed that she started to have feelings for him? The harp scene. The harp scene when he was being artistic and sensitive, like Lucas. <laughs> when he's all you know, a true ruler accepts uh, ridicule. You know, yeah, uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> broken to you know, the whole broken tulip thing came after the oh. harp scene, but uh, because he was being poetic, mm-hmm. a strong moral compass that, that's not Elise's thing. Remember, she's the modern princess. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to be a princess, princess, she wants to be a modern princess, but. Go out there and have your come and get me on legal ball. <laughs> Which, by the way, we do know was a thing. We do know that the coming of age celebration has been a thing forever. In a lot of but different back cultures. When these are traditions originated, if I may go off on a rant a little bit, it wasn't that, oh, she's a grown-up now. She gets to make her own life decisions. She gets to go to college. She gets to get a job. No. <laughs> she is take. her parents are taking bids so that she can go off and make babies, which is her only real function in life. Hooray for making babies. <laughs> So all the people that explain to us that coming of age balls and quinceañeras and and debutante balls and and everything were a thing. (laughs) Yes, we know they were a thing. Thank you for that information. We did know that. But they're icky because it's unlike uh, it's showing that a boy has become a man so that he can, you know, start a family and get start his career and go to war and you know <laughs> all the other adult things that he does as autonomously as a child can't do all it meant for a girl was that now she's old enough to have sex and make babies <laughs> that's all it meant she didn't get any extra privileges she might have got a party if, if her parents were wealthy 
But then again, she was a princess who doesn't even have any kind of uh, political power whatsoever. I'm None. just a princess. So None. I'm rich, and you do what I say, and I'm living the high life, and I have no responsibilities anyway, so take that for what it is. I don't know. <laughs> I choose Lucas. No, you don't. You choose Lee. Okay, I choose Lee. Okay. No, you don't. You choose Lucas. Okay, I choose Lucas. <laughs> cared what she wanted nope nope <laughs> anyway sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> matilda brun suggests that says i would suggest scratching the whole i hate you because you're a jerk no wait now i'm in love with you trope i hate that trope yeah thank you star wars i love you but we can have some actual legitimate relationships here please <laughs> not everyone has to be han and leia <laughs> Having him laugh over Elisa's prank would give him them a decent starting connection, and then you can just have them spend more time together, and the conflict being that Lucas feels like he's becoming a third wheel, rather than him suddenly have feelings for Elise. So, I don't know that that would make Elise more attracted to him, um, but as far as making him not, as as Ben said, without so much of a stick up his butt, mm -hmm. um that would maybe attract her if he was less hoity-toity. Oh my goodness, this greeting is so very rude. Oh, but it's okay, I'm laughing at it now. What? <laughs> yes, if he had laughed it off and thought that it was just as hilarious as Elise did, that would have instantly bonded them. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, I could be friendly with you, and I could be friendly with you too. Great! Let's see where this goes. <laughs> And <laughs> we have to end on uh, Mackenzie Ebby's answer here, which is just so out there. <laughs> but it deserves a mention. He made me. <laughs> he made me discuss this answer. You, you could have said no. <laughs> I tried. You tried, but you couldn't go through with it because it's a good answer, despite it being so out there. <laughs> I'll be honest. My solution would be to make him gay, mainly interested in Elise as a means of a political marriage with someone who is a friend, and actually develops a crush on Lucas, uh, with Lucas too oblivious to notice. Lee and Elise bond with their interests in the arts, and Lee revealing he's insecure about his masculinity by his father and people, uh, with his sister being a more dominant force. <laughs> I hated and loved this answer at the same time. <laughs> but I could not deny the fact. I'm sorry, gay men are so sexy. A lot of them really, really are. They try to make themselves especially pretty for their they potential boyfriends, don't they? <laughs> oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> They're well grown. And he's a... And he's in touch with his feelings at the arts, no! <laughs> and meanwhile, here's poor Lee. Hello, Princess Elise. I am growing very fond of you. <laughs> we should probably get married, don't you think? <laughs> and it was not uncommon. Nope. That's just how it was done. <laughs> you didn't marry, you know, royalty especially, did not marry for love or attraction or anything like that. You married to, for political power for your family and to carry on your family line. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to like doing it. Nope. <laughs> there were a lot of princess beards. <laughs> Sorry. And on the flip side That's of... That's why I couldn't just outright say no to Mackenzie's answer. Because <laughs> it happened. A lot. And, and, it, and it's just so lucky that uh, Lee happens to... Mary Elise here because now they get to, uh, to employ that uh, cute little tulip boy too. <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, Lucas, someday you will be mine. <laughs> anyway, now that we've been completely ended on a very offensive note. <laughs> hey, if it's funny enough, then it's okay. <laughs> but yes, now that we've answered all the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, best answers of this question. Again, some really, really good ones, but we can't talk about all of them or we'll be here all day. And again, we're looking at a review that's almost an hour long. we got to cut corners here somewhere. <laughs>
But uh, thank you all for uh, uh, contributing to this question of, of the review. And be sure to uh, give us your answers for the next one, and we'll see who we read off next time. And we will see you later. Bye, guys. Subscribe. Like. Follow. Oh!